Explorer X here. The community voted and you wanted this. Thank you to all who took the time to answer. Are you ready to learn about some truly horrifying experiments the government has done? Without the citizens being aware, do you believe any of this? Leave a comment at the end. Put on your tin foil hats and line the rooms. We're going down a rabbit hole you may never escape from. You may even lose your minds. You've been warned. For nine years, beginning in 1954, employees of the Central Intelligence Agency randomly picked up unsuspecting patrons in bars in the United States and slipped LSD into their food and drink. The Senate Select Committee on Intelligence Activities disclosed in its final report, released yesterday. These experiments were part of a far-ranging effort by the CIA and the United States military to develop chemical and biological warfare agents. The experiments, the committee said, resulted in massive abridgments of the rights of American citizens, sometimes with tragic consequences. Two deaths can be attributed to these programs, the committee said. It added, other participants may still suffer from residual effects. For many of the individuals were unaware of what chemical they had received, there was usually no medical supervision and afterward, there were no follow-up studies to determine long-term effects. Ending a 15-month study of the intelligence community, the Senate committee made the following recommendations with regard to experimentation on humans. No experiments should be conducted without consent of each individual in writing. With a disinterested third party as a witness and in accordance with the guidelines issued by the National Commission for the Protection of Human Subjects for Biomedical and Behavioral Research, the jurisdiction of the Corn Mission should be extended to cover the Central Intelligence Agency and the other intelligence agencies of the United States government, which so far have conducted experiments on humans with virtually no outside supervision. The Director of Central Intelligence and the Secretary of Defense should continue to make determined efforts to find those who were administered LSD in the government experiments and to provide follow-up examinations and treatment, if necessary. The United States intelligence community began investigating mind-altering drugs in the late 1940s and early 1950s as officials became concerned that the communist powers had started using chemical and biological agents in interrogations, brainwashing and in attacks designed to harass disable or kill allied personnel, the committee reported. However, the committee said, the defensive orientation soon became secondary as the possible use of these agents to obtain information from or gain control over enemy agents became apparent. These experiments had been closely guarded secrets until the Rockefeller Commission reported in June that a man inter-identified as Dr. Frank Olson had died after having unwittingly been given LSD in a CIA experiment. Details of Dr. Olson's death and the wider involvement of the CIA and the military began to emerge as journalists, and some members of Congress started their own investigations. Frank Olson was a biological warfare scientist who worked for the United States government during the Cold War. He was employed by the United States Army Biological Warfare Laboratories and later by the Central Intelligence Agency. He was involved in the development of biological weapons and also participated in the testing of these weapons on both animals and human subjects. On November 19, 1953, Olson was secretly drugged with LSD by his CIA supervisor, Dr. Sidney Gottlieb, as part of a mind control experiment called Project MKUltra. The experiment was aimed at finding ways to manipulate human behavior and thoughts through the use of drugs and other techniques. Nine days later, on November 28, 1953, Olson fell to his death from a hotel room window in New York City. The death was ruled a suicide, but Olson's family and friends were never convinced that he would have taken his own life. In 1975, the existence of Project MKUltra was revealed to the public through the testimony of a Senate committee investigating CIA activities. It was also revealed that Olson had been drugged with LSD before his death. This led to a re-examination of the case, and in 1994, Olson's family was awarded a settlement from the U.S. government for their role in his death. In 2012, Olson's body was exhumed, and a forensic examination revealed that he had died from blunt force trauma, supporting the theory that his death was not a suicide. However, it is still unclear who or what was responsible for his death, and if it was a murder, who might be the perpetrator. The case is still considered as open, 
and there are many theories about what happened to Frank Olson, including the possibility that he was murdered by the CIA to prevent him from revealing classified information about the use of biological weapons. The Frank Olson case is considered a significant event in the history of the CIA, and it is often cited as an example of the unethical conduct of government agencies during the Cold War. It raises important questions about the potential misuse of power and lack of accountability. The case led to the creation of the United States Senate Select Committee on Intelligence, which was responsible for overseeing the activities of the CIA and other intelligence agencies. In the late 1950s, the committee said, the Inspector General of the CIA wrote that precautions had to be taken not only to protect operations from exposure to enemy forces, but also to conceal these activities from the American public in general. The knowledge that the agency is engaging in unethical and illicit activities, the Inspector General said, would have serious repercussions in political and diplomatic circles and would be detrimental to the accomplishment of the agency's mission. A member of the Senate Intelligence Committee staff estimated that thousands of Americans had been involved in the experiments and that millions of dollars had been spent, but he said it was impossible to be precise in these areas and equally impossible to learn many details of the experiments conducted by the sea. I because a large number of records on the agency's drug programs were destroyed in 1973 by Dr. Sidney Gottlieb, one of the principal officials in the experiments, on the verbal order of Richard Helms, who later became director of the agency. In the tests on unsuspecting subjects, the committee indicated that the CIA had sought to learn the effectiveness of LSD on individuals at all social levels, high and low, Native Americans and foreign. A committee staff member said these experiments were conducted in bars in two major cities, one on the East Coast, one on the West, and at least one cocktail party on the West Coast. The Central Intelligence Agency informed university officials this week that Harvard was involved in one way or another in two research projects conducted under the agency's MKUltra Human Behavior Control Project. Daniel Steiner 54, general counsel to the university, said yesterday. Steiner said the university received substantial financial records from the CIA outlining Harvard's involvement in the controversial mind control program. He refused to release any details about the documents yesterday, but said the two research projects in question did not include any drug experimentation. The CIA secretly operated the MKUltra research project for 12 years beginning in the 1950s to study the effects of alcohol and various narcotics on witting and unwitting human subjects at a number of American universities and colleges. The New York Times reported last month that the CIA had sponsored a separate series of hallucinogenic drug experiments conducted during the 1950s at a Harvard-affiliated teaching hospital. The test studied the effects of LSD on students from Harvard and other Boston-area universities. Steiner said his office was spent a week to 10 days studying the set of CIA documents before releasing the materials to the public. He added that he does not yet know whether the two research projects linked to the MKUltra program involved a contract with Harvard or a consulting relationship with an individual affiliated with the university. Steiner said the CIA first notified him of Harvard's connection with the Mind Control Project in a letter received in late August. Steiner said he requested documents concerning Harvard's involvement with the MKUltra program earlier this month, and the agency sent him the materials. A few days ago, chain letter in a related development, spokesman for the campaign to stop government spying announced yesterday that the group has mailed letters to the presidents of 42 American colleges and universities urging them to follow the lead of President Bach in adopting guidelines which would prevent secret CIA work on college campuses. Linda Lotz, a spokesman for the Washington-based organization, said yesterday the letter, dated September 12th, has already elicited written responses from two college presidents, whom she declined to identify. She added that the organization's staff will follow up on the letters by calling the 42 university presidents later this week. Lotz also said the group advises concerned university heads to invoke the Freedom of Information Act to request the CIA to supply all of its documents that relate to their universities. John Marks a staff member at the Center for National Security Studies who is writing a book on the MKUltra projects, said yesterday the extent of Harvard's involvement has not been fully disclosed. 
Marx filed a lawsuit against the CIA earlier this year that helped trigger the recent series of disclosures about the MKUltra program. Army agents carrying suitcase atomizers sprayed unsuspecting travelers at National Airport with common bacteria 20 years ago, declassified documents revealed this week, in an experiment designed to gauge the nation's vulnerability to an enemy-launched epidemic of smallpox. The experiment, one of a series first made public in 1977, was part of the Army's highly secret biological warfare research conducted between 1943 and 1971 at Fort Detrick. MDE and, a microbiologist said yesterday, may have been more potentially harmful to those sprayed than scientists realized at the time. The bacteria used in the experiment, Bacillus subtilis, is in the air all around us and won't harm a healthy person, said Dr. Arthur Saz, professor of microbiology at the Georgetown University Medical Center. But in infirm or elderly persons, whose immune system is impaired, heavy concentrations of the opportunistic, microorganism can produce potentially complicating infections, Sus said. We know more about such substances now. You couldn't do such an experiment legally today. Sas was questioned about the experiment after the Church of Scientology released government documents this week detailing experiments mentioned only sketchily in testimony during intelligence oversight investigations in Congress seven years ago. Sylvia Stannard, a spokesman for the Scientologists, said the organization obtained the documents under the Freedom of Information Act two years ago and has been studying them ever since. She said the material was sent to the House Subcommittee on Investigations and the House Committee on Science and Technology after the Army recently requested funds to expand its biological warfare defense facilities at Dugway Proving Ground in Utah. Both the United States and the Soviet Union signed a 1972 treaty banning biological weapons but research continues on both sides. The Soviets are reported to have used poison gas or chemicals in the war in Afghanistan. The Pentagon says it is only interested in defensive studies at Dugway, but this was a defensive study at Washington National, and it may have been harmful. Standard said, We don't want innocent people being used as guinea pigs. An Army spokesman said yesterday that the tests in question were fully listed in the two-volume report released in February 1977 and declined further comments saying there were no new developments to report. Declassified documents made public during the mid-1970s disclosed that the Army and the Central Intelligence Agency triggered mock epidemics during the 1960s by spraying such targets as Chicago and New York subway passengers, and even assassinated. President Richard M. Nixon with germs via the White House air conditioning system. Details on the attacks, however, have been few. The Army's Miscellaneous Publication 7, from Fort Detrick, which the Scientologists obtained, sought to prove how relatively simply an enemy agent might scatter smallpox through the United States with less than an hour's work in an urban airport. Using five suitcase-housed aerosol generators and an equal number of disguised air samplers, the agents sprayed bacteria in the North Terminal and then tested various locations in the terminal for effective dispersal of the germ. It is emphasized that the five trials, including the sampling procedures, were completed without challenge or question. The document states, No terminal employee, passenger or visitor gave any outward indication of suspicion that something unusual was taking place. Outbound passengers would carry the germs throughout the country, the document says, and numerous secondary cases of smallpox could be expected from extensive exposure of people to the primary cases before diagnosis was made. The document, whose authenticity was not challenged by the Pentagon, reports a similar experiment at the District Greyhound bus terminal and paints similar scenarios for simulated attacks at bus stations in Chicago and San Francisco, though it was unclear whether any sprayings in those cities actually took place. The Scientologists released with the documents a publication from the Society for General Microbiology, identifying the substance actually sprayed, Bacillus subtilis, as a newly suspected agent in food poisoning and operating room infections. Georgetown Medical Center says confirmed that the commonplace organism, once thought benign, has become viewed as a complicating factor for patients, already medically compromised. At a certain stage in its growth, he said, the bacillus produces an enzyme that is toxic to penicillin. 
healthy scientists or technicians spraying it, he said, would be unaffected. But those walking around with cancer, heart disease or a host of other ailments could be affected, depending on their degree of exposure. He declined to estimate how many such people might populate an average airport, but said, in any thousand people, you know there will be some. The airport experiments estimated exposure rate of 560,000 to 837,000 organisms per person is not a hell of a high exposure rate, he said. But he said were the same number of streptococci sprayed on a healthy throat it might be enough to produce a strep throat. There was no indication in the documents that anyone ever got sick from the springs. But then, Saz pointed out, there was no medical reason for any follow-up study at the time. As for Fort Detrick, it was closed in 1972 and turned into a center for cancer research and genetic engineering. One of its first guests was Soviet Minister of Health Boris Petrovsky, who was shown the transformation as dramatic evidence of U.S. desire for detente. Now a bonus, do you still think the government wouldn't do anything to us? Listen and comment after. President Clinton apologized Tuesday to the survivors and families of those who unknowingly were subjects of government-sponsored radiation experiments, and ordered his cabinet to devise a system of relief, including financial compensation. When the government does wrong, we have a moral responsibility to admit it, Clinton said. The duty we owe to one another to tell the truth and to protect our fellow citizens from excesses like these is one we can never walk away from, saying, our government failed in that duty. He apologized. To all the American people who must be able to rely upon the United States to keep its word to tell the truth and to do the right thing. Clinton made the remarks as he accepted the recommendations of an advisory committee he appointed to study the secret experiments, which began in 1944 and continued for three decades. Although the panel studied about 4,000 radiation experiments that took place during that period, it recommended that only a handful of victims receive compensation. Panel members specifically cited three experiments, including one project where 18 hospital patients, most of them terminally ill, were unknowingly injected with plutonium to determine how long the substance would remain in their body. The committee recommended that several subjects of total body irradiation experiments conducted during World War II, and the subject of a zirconium injection experiment, known only as CALSI, also be included. Nevertheless, administration officials appeared to leave the door open for additional restitution. Energy Secretary Hazel O'Leary said in an interview that there could be thousands, many thousands, of individuals who deserve payment but stressed that both the government and the panel have been hampered by poor or non-existent record-keeping during that time. Since her department's investigation began, of the 10,000 calls we received, about 3,000 individuals gave us enough information to enable us to look in records and, in all the searching of a quarter of a million pages, we found only 50 names, she said. In the case of the 18 subjects of plutonium injections, however, she said discussions regarding compensation would begin immediately with their families. The experiment, conducted from 1945 to 1947, was deemed necessary at the time to assess the risks that workers faced when exposed to such materials. One patient was injected at Oak Ridge Hospital in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, 11 at the University of Rochester, three at the University of Chicago and three at a University of California campus. It was unclear which facility was involved. O'Leary said the funds would come out of her department's budget. We are ready and willing to begin a negotiation. One thing all of us want to avoid is a protracted and expensive lawsuit against the government. Clinton also ordered a review of the procedures for government-sponsored research on humans and said he will create a bioethics advisory panel to police the research process to see to it that never again do we stray from the basic values of protecting our people and being straight with them. He acknowledged that medical and scientific progress depends upon learning about people's responses to new medicines, to new cutting-edge treatments. But there is a right way and a wrong way to do it. The work began when many such studies were undertaken in secret to help understand radiation risks to workers involved in the development of the atomic bomb. This was long before it became standard practice to issue informed consent to medical research subjects, laying out the risks and benefits of participation. 
Clinton said some of the experiments performed during that period were unethical not only by today's standards but by the standards of the time. They failed both the test of our national values and the test of humanity. The experiments were shrouded not for a compelling reason of national security but for the simple fear of embarrassment, and that was wrong. He added, The experiments ended in 1974, when the government recognized the need to protect human subjects and established regulations that govern human research. Well, I think I should keep my tinfoil hat on for the rest of the night, just to be sure. Subscribing and sharing my channel will not only keep you updated of new content, but help the channel grow upwards and outwards. Until next time my friends, Explorer X out.